Hey now everybody and welcome back. This is part three. This is my list and I have to say that my list is fantastic. It is leagues and head and shoulders above what? everybody else's list. Nonsense. That's your, that's your little biased to making such claims. Besides, that's 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 I, my job. I, I always say that. I write the intro so I can say whatever I want. So let's get on with it. My list of great board game artists. All right, so the first person on my list mm -hmm. is a guy who has only done two board games, and actually they're card games, because he does a lot of other kinds of artwork. His name uh -huh. is Josh Emmerich. He's done the artwork for Campy Creatures Ooh. and Caper, which are both by uh, the Keyford Games. Yep. And I absolutely adore this guy's artwork style. Uh, the reason that I say that he only done two, the other things he's done is he's done all craft beer labels oh yeah. gosh I yeah. saw some of them they're great they're was, absolutely gorgeous I was looking at them and I'm like man I gotta find how to get these beers I know so I can put them on my shelf because I have a shelf of like beer bottles that I think have beautiful artwork mm -hmm. on them uh, these would like go right up there at the forefront yeah I picture Chris's house just shelves yeah and everywhere. shelves of things on them all over the place um, yeah sat, uh, that's actually true <laughs> <laughs> I put a lot of shelving up so I can put things mm. there's well, a shelf for that. that yes there is a shelf well the reason i love josh emmerich so much is because uh he has such a style like it's a very it's a graphic style mm -hmm. almost like a graphic design style but there's a great artistry to it and he does almost like 1960s period style very well like yeah 1950s i think like 60s right think like uh the old style movie posters yeah, um, and, but he does them but in like such a way. But like style, right? Yeah, he but does. It, but I think he like um, his style brings it to like a modern age. So he right, takes exactly. these like 1960s styles and makes it kind of it 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 doesn't feel so old. Right. Exactly. Right? That's what I love about it so much, and that's sort of like a style in the whole craft beer world is like almost that modern retro style. And that's yeah. exactly what it is. Because if you look at Campy Creatures, for example, I want all of those. And he even yeah. sells them on his website, poster <laughs> sizes <laughs> of all of those cards. Yep, and I went to look at that, and they're all freaking sold out. Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> uh, you can get them, right? When the Campy Creatures Kickstarter was up for the expansion, you could have gotten all of them. Yeah. And I was like, it's just really expensive. And I was like, yeah. Chris, I know you would have bought them, but. <laughs> I probably would have. I probably would have. Yeah. I think I'll get them and put them in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh Emmerich, absolutely love his artwork. I hope he does more games because he just has a style that's beautiful. Yeah. He's got a really cool style. Campy Creatures is a fun game, and most of that fun is, well, the game, but also the amazing artwork. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that artwork just finishes it off. Thank you for that stinger, Steve. You just reinforced it. <laughs> All right. So my next one on the list is... Gonna be no surprise to anybody because we talk about him on our podcasts and our videos all the time. Mm -hmm. And he drew me as a sea captain. <laughs> this is Mr. Ryan Lockett many, from Red Raven Games. <laughs> how many sea captains are there of you? <laughs> only two, <laughs> only two. But I want everybody to draw me as a sea captain. After this, there's thing. gonna be like 20. <laughs> hey, you could draw me as things, people. <laughs> I'm not picky, whatever. Half-naked barbarian. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> anyway, Ryan Lockett. I just absolutely adore this guy's style oh, because yeah. like we talk about a million times on the show, uh, he does the game design, he does the graphic design, he does the artwork, he does the publishing, he runs the Kickstarters, he runs the company, he does everything, he's a renaissance man. Yep. He is a true artist in every sense of the word from beginning to end and it is awesome because when you look at a Ryan Lockett game, you see it and you see that this this clearly a Ryan Lockett game. He's got yep. his style yep. that he always works in. And it's funny because even his artwork bleeds over into his other games. He's got yes. Empires of the Void 2, and he's got The Ancient World, and he's yep. got Near and Far and Above and Below, and all of them have the Frogmen and the Pigmen yep. oh, and the yes. Cats. And like, there's, just, like, mm. there's a story behind yeah. his... He's got a, he built this universe. Exactly. Right? And who knows if they're all in the same world or not? I don't know. I don't know. But mm -hmm. like it feels like they are. So it feels like there's this continuation of of games yeah like I'm when I'm playing this game I'm also playing this game and that game and it's almost like you could play a full day of Ryan Lockett and get like a story out of it I and the thing that impresses me most about Ryan Lockett is he of, of like all the other things he does the game design the publishing all that stuff that he does by himself 
he puts passion behind the mm -hmm. art, which I think is amazing, amazing. And when you we, we talk about the 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 little Easter eggs, mm -hmm. right? When you play above and below or near and far, there's plenty of Easter eggs in there. So it's not like he's just throwing a bunch of artwork together. Sure. He's putting effort and passion. When I think Ryan Lockett, I think labor of love. Mm -hmm. Like this number one guy out there who loves his games. Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of the same vibes I get with Quentin Tarantino movies because I'll be like, there's yeah. Samuel Jackson. There's Samuel Jackson. Yeah. There's Samuel Jackson. All right, well, there there's you go, the Ryan man. Lockett. <laughs> there's the Frogman. There's the Frogman. I'm, I'm with you, Steve. That's great. And another thing that I really am impressed by with Ryan Lockett is that he, like a true artist, is always innovating and always improving, right? Right. Because he's got second editions of his games. Uh, City of Iron, which is my favorite game that he yep. put out. City of Iron, beautiful game. Uh, came out with a second edition. There's a second edition. Well, it's not second edition, but it's part two, uh, Empires of the Void 2, mm -hmm. yep. which is sort of like an innovation on that game. And now we got uh, the Ancient World revised edition, second edition, with that adds in things adds in things that we wanted. We wanted those Titans to be attacking us. And yep, they are yep, now, yep. so great. But man, he's always improving upon it. Like an artist does. An artist always yep. works his craft and Ryan Lockett always works his craft. Yep. When we were talking about this episode, I went through and I looked at, from kind of like, his early days to what's coming up, and you can definitely see this progression of improvement, style changes. He'll try something, get rid of it, and try something new, mm -hmm. and keep that. Uh, mm. This is this is a fantastic pick, and and actually one I wanted to put on my list, mm -hmm. but I was like, you know what? This is I think I think this is your number one game artist out there. He's up there. He's pretty much up there. Yeah. yeah. And and so it was like, this is a Jamie one. To <laughs> like, this is Jamie is going to like go nuts. So, Well, I tell you what, he's inspired me. You know, constantly improving, changing things up. Steven Friends. <laughs> the next generation. <laughs> this, this episode is essentially a big advertisement for Steven <laughs> right Friends exactly. at this point. All right. Well, let's get beyond that. And let's talk about my third pick, who is also competing for one of my favorite game artists there ever has been, and this is Vincent Dutre. This guy is one of the biggest guys out there. He's one of the most well-known guys out there that does board game art, and there's a reason, because he is a master at it. I would... I would commission him to paint pictures of my family, kids, like things. I would put all of his artwork. <laughs> kids. Kids. You've got kids? <laughs> I don't know. What have Painters you not been kids. telling us, Jamie? Oh, I, yeah, I've got a lot of shorties all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but anyway, paint me a giraffe. I'm just saying, basically, I would hang his artwork throughout my house as fine art. Yeah. Because it's beautiful. And here's the thing that specifically I love about this guy. Now, I'm not saying that anybody who does this other thing is bad, but he is a true artist in the respect that he uses brush and paint and markers uh. and, and pencils. He does not use digital artwork. Now, yeah. granted, all these other guys on my list and most likely on their lists probably do mostly digital artwork. Yeah. That's just the way it is today, right? It's okay because it's still badass that yeah. still takes a lot of talent but for some reason the fact that vincent Tutre uses traditional uh medium for something about that just really like juices me up it, it it it's so different like i love digital art i think digital art is fantastic mm -hmm. we've been introduced to a lot of new artists because of that uh but when you have this actual watercolor or oil paints or whatever else in a board game mm -hmm. It just adds this extra like wow factor. Like I think CO2, mm -hmm. that was the one thing that drew me to CO2 was yeah. that art. And it was this watercolor style. Evolution uh, as well. Yeah. Evolution is the thing. All watercolor paintings. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exactly right. And even though digital art is beautiful. Yeah. You can look at it and you can see that it's the draw work. You can see the style that, yeah. you know, the brushes from Photoshop and that kind of stuff. You can yeah. see it. Think right? of those old cartoons that were all flash Sure, exactly. You can right? see the difference. There is a difference in the style and the difference in the medium. When you look at Vincent Dutre's art, you can see that it is traditional artwork. And it's, I just love it. I just mm -hmm. love it so much. This guy is a talent. He's a fine artist in the board game artwork medium. I just love it. What makes me sad is that Steve Spang was not on your list. He is <laughs> okay. a fine artist. Number, <laughs> number four. Number four. Number four. Honorable mention. He's not a board game artist, <laughs> but he is an artist, Steve Spang. And here is some of his artwork for you to view and enjoy. <laughs> 
And we'll leave you with that. <laughs> we'll, yeah, I think we'll leave you forever with that. <laughs> now we're going to get canceled this show, too. Please come back. <laughs> <laughs> Delete. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for joining us for our series uh. on board game artists. I hope that you guys will look at these board games as artwork themselves. Because really, from beginning to end, you got mm. game design, you got graphic design, you got artwork, you got even the marketing and packaging of these things is really artwork. And mm -hmm. you can tell when a publisher, designer, and artist really put passion into these games because they're beautiful. It's something oh, that we really love. It just, it it, it really makes my day mm -hmm. seeing these, seeing a fantastic piece, so. Yep. All right, well, come on back next time when we come up with another topic to ramble on about over three days and maybe Stephen Friends maybe. doesn't get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> see you later, everybody. Have a good one. Good night. See ya. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.